Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. MSI sent over one of their RTX 3060 Ti gaming extras for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio most recently. And this time we have a Founders GPU and we're also comparing it to another 3060 Ti. So that's three in total. That's three, right? Yeah. Anyway, let's check it out. As far as availability of these new 3060 Ti cards, from what I've seen, they're in stock at most places here in Australia, and they're actually pretty easy to get here, but I can't speak for the rest of the world because I have seen stock levels and I've had a bit of a look around, but yes, as of filming this video in Australia, they have plenty of stock. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video, and as usual, there's chapters in all of our videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of our, any of our videos on the whole channel, as of whenever they introduce this feature, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description of any of our videos. Also, as usual, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what we're trying to say. And I say this at the start, so people can really understand what we're trying to say. These are the out of the box figures with this GPU because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs. And this is just how it is. This is what we've observed. And this is the consensus from most people that we've ever spoken to about this. And for people who wanna know how these GPUs overclock, we're gonna come back to this in a few weeks with a separate video comparing the three 3060 Ti's that we've got and yeah, we have a few more of them in now to compare, so it makes more sense if we just do this a little bit later and just focus on overclocking. And we also don't have a Radeon 6800 for comparison either. We never got one. Okay, let's get the benchmarks out of the way. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire GPU database, which is... Uh, creeping up to about 100 cards now. The graphs change because the cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graphs. Some people don't like it. That's what works for us and that's what we're going to continue to do. We also use our regular test bench for this testing because it gives you guys accurate results based on the same hardware that we always use. So nothing changes between these GPU videos in terms of hardware. It's always exactly the same. Let's jump in the deep end with some Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic pause button to pause the video anytime if you want to look at the graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing is that at 1080p, the 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio is slightly slower than the other two 3060 Ti's that we've tested. Now this is not going to be the trend with the rest of these tests. As usual with Linux and Vulkan, the performance is better at 1080p, and this is usually the case with Linux, and this is what you're seeing with all the other cards on this graph as well. We put the 2080 Super next to the 3060 Ti's as a quick reference to see how it compares to that card, because that's kind of where the performance is for this card. At 1440p, we're seeing a small uplift compared to the 2080 Super, and in comparison to the other 3060 Ti's, the Gaming X Trio is slightly slower. If we look at Linux, we're seeing all three 3060 Ti's performing exactly the same here. At 4K, we're seeing the same being echoed with Windows being slightly faster than Linux as well, and with the 3060 Ti's only being marginally faster than the 2080 Super, and all three 3060 Ti's perform exactly the same here. All right, let's jump on over to superposition. We sometimes get comments along the lines of people saying that we use the stock OpenGL implementation in Linux versus DX11 in Windows for comparison. We only compare the out of the box experience only. First up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark, this one's highly GPU bound and we're seeing the Gaming X Trio being quicker than the 2080 Super and the other two 3060 Ti's in Windows. 
In Linux, the OpenGL version doesn't perform as well. That's just how it is with Linux, regardless of the kernel and the driver being used. And we're seeing the Gaming X Trio slightly edging out the two other 3060 Ti's in this test. At 1440p in Windows, the Gaming X Trio edges out on top and is faster than the other two 3060 Ti's as well. It's looking like this card is better at DX11. In Linux, all of the cards around the middle of this graph from the 3070 down to the 6800 XT are performing pretty close to each other and there's only a few frames in it between all of these cards, which is why it's kind of hard to recommend anything in Linux at this resolution. At 4K, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio beat the other 23060 Ti's by a margin of two frames per second. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio is really echoing the same results here. It is the faster card, but only by a minuscule margin. Next up, Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and for Linux as well. At 1080p, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio coming in slightly behind the Founders Edition and the Gigabyte card. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with the Gaming X Trio coming in behind the other two 3060 Ti's. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the Gaming X Trio outperform the other two 3060 Ti's, which is quite interesting. However, in Linux, this is a different story. The Gaming X Trio comes in behind the other two 3060 Ti's we tested. We mentioned this in all of our 3060 Ti coverage so far that we decided to omit Shadow of the Tomb Raider DLSS and RTX benchmarks as well as their stranding results from this video because you guys have told us that you don't really care about them. So we're working on a new suite of ray traced and DLSS and Fidelity FX benchmarks that we're going to introduce next year. We're going to do a mega roundup early next year. Once we have everything and once we know everything, we're gonna share all of that data with you guys. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio above 60 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is very, very impressive. However, this is most likely due to the Gaming X Trio using a similar cooler in size and dimension to the 3080 and 3090 Gaming X Trio. It's uh, definitely an overkill cooler for a 3060 Ti. However, when it comes to overclocking, I suspect that the Gaming X Trio will have the most headroom, but we'll come back to this in another video, considering these Ampere GPUs don't overclock that well. Also, be aware that we're running all of this testing on an open air test bench, and the results in a closed system will be different from what we saw here. Uh, the results will be different because we have a climate controlled environment where everything is consistent and we test it this way across the board every single time. As far as power consumption, we observed the Gaming X Trio hitting a board power draw maxing out at around 238 watts at full load over the period of one hour. The advertised board power here is 240 watts, so this result is pretty much on the money. We also observed the 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio to have near silent operation with zero coil wine over our stress testing period. Also, again, we're on an open air test system. We're gonna hear absolutely everything in a closed system. You're just not gonna hear this card. And again, like all of these GPU videos, we make these acoustic observations because they make more sense for people who don't understand decibels. That's basically why we do it this way. And it's really tangible if the card's sitting next to you. Otherwise, those numbers just don't mean a lot to the regular user. 
But what makes the 3060 Ti Gaming X Trigo different to the Founders Edition? Well, there's a few tiny things that you'll notice. The first thing you'll notice is again, like the Gigabyte card that we covered recently, it doesn't have the 12 pin power connector. It uses two eight pin PCIe power connectors. Although I think this is a little bit overkill. However, I suspect it's because this card is geared more towards overclocking. So you can't really find that too surprising. The overall size for a 3060 Ti in my opinion is it's too big. However, given that the cooler is the most efficient one that we've seen so far with the 3060 Ti's, I think it's a bit of a trade off between size and efficiency. So yeah, it's close to being a three slot card that measures around 323 millimeters in length. And it's the same length as the 3080 and 3090 Gaming X Trio. It's a big card, I'm not gonna lie. It's got the same RGB options that we saw on the other 30 series gaming X Trio lineup. It's got the strip on the side of the back plate. The logo is also illuminated. And also there's accents on the fan shroud between the fans. All right, ladies and gents, we've got to the part of the video that I'm sure you wanna hear me rant about. As far as the pricing for the MSI RTX 3060 Ti Gaming X Trio, it's going for around 489 US dollars or around, you ready, Claire? Ready. Ready? Yep. 899 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, again, this is subject to availability, which in Australia is actually pretty good. Every single time I have to say the Australian pricing in these new 30 series videos, I feel dirty, right? I get that the US pricing doesn't include tax, and even if you add the tax, it's still hundreds of dollars cheaper than it is here in Australia. And I actually explained this in the last 3060 Ti video as well. Please fix the Australian pricing for these GPUs. It's making it really hard for the Aussie consumers to commit to buy something that I would otherwise call a very strong offering from MSI. And I'm just gonna have to start recommending that people buy Xboxes and PS5s because they're cheaper than buying this GPU. <laughs> it's like me being honest with you guys. Anyways, what do you think about the Gaming X Trio? I, again, I think this is one of the strongest offerings that we've seen so far with the 3060 Ti. Given the size of the cooler, I think this thing's going to overclock like crazy. Now we do have another video, which I already talked about. We're going to compare all the three cards that we've already got. We're going to overclock them and we're going to see which one is the best bang for buck. So let us know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in seeing from us. And I'm keen to hear all of your thoughts on all of this. I'm keen to hear your thoughts about that very yucky Australian pricing. Yeah, I think I'm done here. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do. Hit the dislike button twice. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available on Patreon. If you want to get early access to videos like this one right here, it's available on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. Fix that Australian pricing. Fix that Australian pricing. Ooh, yeah, baby, fix that Australian pricing. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the right people will hear that. Hopefully. For everyone else, I hope you enjoyed my little singing at the end. It was absolutely abysmal. <laughs> Thanks for watching.